Um, okay, so if there aren't questions, then we can move on to what I guess is the second to last, um, the second to last one. So at this point, we've we've pretty much wrapped up the discussion of the Puma capabilities. So the next two sections are maybe a little bit, a little bit more straightforward. Um, what I'm going to be talking about next is just giving you a little bit of a flavor of what you would do if you wanted to run say parametric studies or sensitivity analysis or uncertainty quantification, um, this kind of thing, if you wanted to use Puma uh, to do simulations uh, of this or even optimization problems. And you can imagine lots of scenarios where uh, this would be important. I mean, just, just as, as one example, if you're using thresholding to do, um, uh, to, to do segmentation and you wanna see how sensitive your solution is, to slight variations in your threshold values, um, you can do uncertainty quantification based on you know, a range of, of threshold values that you think might be appropriate. What I'm going to attempt to do here, which is never a good idea, which, which is coding with an audience, but I'm going to attempt to just kind of show um, how to set up a real simple uh, sensitivity analysis study. And in particular, uh, what we're going to do is set up a um, a little a little study where uh, we generate random fibers with a couple different variable parameters, and then do a um, uh, do a sensitivity analysis, a SOBOL, I think I'm pronouncing that right, S O B O L, uh, sensitivity analysis on uh, seeing how important these parameters are for a given material property, and just to be fast, the property we're going to calculate is uh, specific surface area. So let me share, uh, let me share my screen. Now, for um, no particular reason other than uh, when I Googled it, this is the first one that came up. I'm going to be using a Python uh, software called SALib, so Sensitivity Analysis Library, in order to do uh, the sensitivity analysis study. So um, I, I ran a, a really quick case earlier, and, and it seemed to do quite well in terms of uh, in terms of SOBOL analysis. But I just want to show you how you would set something like this up for your own project. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to open PyCharm. So I'm going to be doing this using uh, PumaPy. So we'll open PyCharm. We'll start a new uh, a new project. And then uh, we're going to want to make sure we can link this project to uh, make sure we can link this project to PumaPy. So uh, Federico went through you know how to do this. We're going to assume that you have already uh, installed Puma for the purposes of this. Um, and uh, here we go. So if you click down here on the bottom, you can set your interpreter settings. And you want to, if you haven't already, um, add an interpreter so that it can find the uh, Puma environment Python executable. So you can do that by saying add interpreter and then uh, you can say existing environment, and then you navigate through and find the uh, Puma executable inside of the um, environment that was created in Conda. So I've already gone through the process of doing that. And so now if we just do a simple test, import Puma Pi as Puma, make sure that we are running with, uh, so I, I change my executable configuration here for the script, make sure that we're running, here we go, with the Puma Anaconda Python package. Say OK. And then we'll just import it and then print uh, hello world. And you can see we were able to successfully import Puma and it runs fine. So. Looking at this SA lib, uh, I'm just going to take their default example for running a sensitivity analysis study. 
So the way that this essay lib uh, uh, software works, you basically define your problem with number of variables that you're going to be changing, the names of these variables, uh, the bounds of the variables, so what the range is, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like when we're doing it on a um, on a uh, a sample uh, on the 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 domain generation for the fibrous materials. Uh, you then generate your um, randomly generated values within these ranges, and it has um, within the SA lib system, it has a way of doing that. And then you generate your output values, which right now is just using an example model, but we're going to replace this with calculating the surface area. And then it does here the uh, SOBOL analysis based on the results and based on how it varied the parameters. So um, what we're going to do is look at uh, the Python tutorial for generating random fiber structures. and uh, Let's just copy this. Let's just copy this in. Um, and uh, we're going to change our variables here. So the first thing we're going to want to change is the radius of the randomly generated fibers. The second thing we're going to want to change is the porosity of the randomly generated fibers. And then uh, let's also uh, let's also change, let's say uh, let's say theta. So this is the variability in the um, uh, variability in the uh, x y plane. So this would be in if you're making it equivalent to the C plus plus GUI, this would be like theta x. Uh, sorry, theta z. Now to change these bounds. we're going to want to specify the range that we want this to be. So say we want the radius to change from four to eight. We want the porosity to change from say 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. And then we're gonna change theta from, I don't know, zero to, from zero to 90. Now, in order to do this, which is we want to generate all of the outputs. Um, I'm actually going to, instead of trying to write it all out again, I'm just going to copy and paste this over. Here we go. So what we're doing is from these uh, from these parameter space that we've defined, we're going to be generating parameter values that are, uh, uh, this is a very small number just so it'll run in the time that we're interested in here. Um, this will end up, uh, if we print the shape, I believe this ends up generating uh, 256 unique um, solutions that we're then going to generate the material calculate the property, and then we'll use that for the sensitivity analysis. So inside our for loop here, which is going to uh, populate the outputs, we're going to uh, assign our values from this param value space to the inputs radius, porosity, theta. We're then going to generate the random fiber structure, calculate the surface area, and uh, then populate the outputs with that surface area. So this right here, all of this was just copied directly from the example in the tutorial. And then the surface area also was calculated directly from uh, here, calculating surface area, was copied directly from this uh, here. So we can go ahead and run this. So here we go, we see that it's uh, creating the fibers and then it's calculating the surface area for uh, each one. So while this is running, um, it'll take a couple minutes to run. If people have any questions, uh, now would be a great time. 
And then if not, while this is running, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into kind of the last section that we want to talk about, which is um, what to do if you are interested in contributing to Puma and you want to maybe add your own custom material properties into Puma. So if anyone has any questions on kind of, in this case, all fibers have the same diameter. So no, uh, so we had a question from Gerardo asking if all the fibers have the same diameter. Um, one of the parameters that we changed was the fiber radius. So the fiber radius in this case is varying between four and eight. But I mean, I chose these values completely arbitrarily, but uh, just to demonstrate the idea behind um, how to set up a study like this. Uh, so Joseph, I actually have a, I have a question. Uh, so um, let me understand here. So uh, so you're generating the fiber structure on the fly, compute the property, and then just deleting the structure, or is the structure being outputted somewhere? Or so uh, like you load it, you load it in memory, and you do the yeah. So then, I'm just loading it in memory, running the calculation directly, and then. Um, and then it, it just goes away. It's just being overwritten uh, the okay. next time uh, oh, the workspace is generated. Now, in principle, if you wanted to keep them, uh, you could just do a, uh, you can go to, let's see, tutorial input output, um, exporting, exporting 3D TIF, uh, wherever that is. Here we go. Um, you would just do, you know, something, uh, something like this, copy over the export 3D TIFF for, uh, and then here you would put like your give it a, give it a parameter. file path plus yeah. i yeah, okay. plus dot TIFF, something like that. And then it'll right. output each of the things, but you know, it takes a lot of disk space, right? If you're going to, if you're going to do a larger sample, I mean, 256 is not a lot of is not a lot right. of cases, but if you're going to do a large one where you're generating, you know, ten thousand uh, data sets, you don't necessarily want to, um, you don't necessarily right. want to output them each time. You could, right. you don't necessarily. Uh, but but so does PumaPy then? Uh, so it, does it purge the memory automatically? Like when you, when you sort when it's done, uh, I guess computing a uh, property or so uh, inside this for loop, this is being created this data structure here and then okay. when the for loop uh, uh and, yeah. goes again it's just going to overwrite yeah. it's just going to overwrite that value gotcha. um let's see uh gerardo asked another question so each each set has a random range of fibers between those values so no it's each um in in this current case it means that uh Image one out of 256. I mean, actually, we can just we can just choose a specific one. Uh, oh, I'm not I'm not printing the values. Anymore. One thing that you could do, Joseph, is uh, is to uh, well, when it's done, you rerun it maybe for a, a couple of uh, iterations and and save uh, and save the volume just to look at it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think we can also just visualize the volume um, okay. directly, and I, I think it won't continue running until I click exit on it. Uh, do I, Federico? Is that right? Can you repeat? I, I didn't. What do you mean? So if um, uh, I, I believe that if we visualize, if we do like a contour render um, mm -hmm. within this for loop. It's not going to keep going on until we exit the contour render, right? I it depends on how on how you if if you want to do it with matplotlib, for example, when you do like p dot show, then if you you can there is an option that there is either to block the the computation or to keep going. So. But okay, so what if we oh, if we just use the, the render, render contour? contour. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I thought you were you wanted to plot like something in a graph. No. 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 I mean. I mean, just using the render contour. But I mean, we can just we can just try it. It's it's gonna stop. Yeah. It's gonna stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's that's what I thought. 
Okay, so this this is the first. Um, by the way, this is what I was talking about—the bug where it ended up being uh, transparent in the background. But we're going to fix this. So this is the first one that was created. Um, you can see it's. Uh, if we exit out now, it'll go on to the next one, and it's a bit different. So each each of these structures will be will be different because they'll have different porosity values different uh, orientations and different. Um... Yeah, Alex Martin says we should keep the transparent bug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah. is kind of cool. <laughs> uh oh. There we go. Okay. So, Francesco, does that answer your question? It does, actually. That's very nice. Um, let's see. Any other questions on this? Obviously, this is just kind of a toy example, but um, you know, hopefully, maybe it gets the ball rolling. Probably, we should upload this uh, or some version of this code as a specific uh, tutorial on the documentation, but uh, we haven't yet. Yeah, also it would be nice to add um, uh, a tutorial with uh, with Dakota uh, if if uh, if I can ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I looked briefly last night to see. I think Dakota does have a have a Python interface. Obviously, mostly it's a C plus plus code. But yeah, it would be a good a, a good um, uh, it would be good to have a, a tutorial for the C plus plus code with Dakota as well. Um, I can work on putting that up. Okay, so if there are no additional questions, then the last thing, which is slated for 15 minutes, but it, it will not it will not take anywhere near that long. Um, I just want to quickly mention, if you wanted to contribute to the code um, by, I don't know, implementing your own uh, material properties or implementing your own uh, you know, generation techniques, this kind of thing. I just want to give you a tiny flavor of what the code looks like behind the scenes for, you know, five, 10 minutes. And uh, it, it should help you get started if you want to um, implement your own classes. Now, uh, if you do want to do any kind of development, it would probably be useful for you to reach out to either myself or Federico, and we can um, work with you a little bit more one-on-one -on, -one on helping you understand the code structure. But We've tried to make it where it's pretty easy to um, to extend the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the GitHub um, for Puma and then show the code show the code this way. So uh, let's see. Let's start with C++ and then I'll show Python, and you'll see kind of the class structure behind the scenes is is quite similar. So in C++, um, everything, and in, the, in Python as well, everything in the code is an operation on the workspace class. So uh, the workspace class is what actually stores your material. It stores the orientation information, if you have any. It stores your volume, uh, your, your voxel length information. All of this is stored in this workspace class. and um, Everything is an operation on that. If you're importing an image, you're importing it into the workspace class. Exporting, same thing. If you're doing filtering, it's an operation on this class. Generation is an operation to you know, add data to this class. And then any kind of material property calculation, you're using that workspace class as the foundation for your numerical method. So the workspace class itself is inside CPP source, utilities, primitives, workspace. And this defines the workspace class. So if you want an understanding of what's happening in the code, this is really the place, um, this is the place to start. Uh, you can see, of course, you know, the various constructors we have, the operations we have. The data structure behind the scenes is uh, just a C++ array buried somewhere in here. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, it's a Puma matrix, which a Puma matrix behind the scenes is just a, 
a C++ array, but it allows you to do the, the matrix operations on it. So as I mentioned, everything is an operation on this workspace class. So for example, if you're wanting to do a material property, let me just pull up uh, surface area. So uh, the surface area class extends the material property class, which extends the operation class. So the operation class is underlying everything. Material property class is a child class of the operation class. And then each property you're doing is a child class of that material property class. And all that this class structure really does is it forces you to do these three things. If you want to do an operation on a workspace, you have to log whatever inputs there are to the operation you're doing. You have to log whatever outputs there are to your operation. And you have to do an error checking function to check your inputs to make sure you're not generating an error. And then you spit out an error message if there's a problem. That's it. And then behind the scenes, everything else is up to you. And uh, there are uh, obviously a lot of examples of already implemented material properties that you can use as an example for how to actually um, how to actually build your own material property. So to quickly uh, show Python, it's it's very very similar. Um, we have the workspace class. In the case of uh, the Python version, behind the scenes, instead of being a Puma matrix, we have just a standard NumPy matrix, um, which handles a lot of the matrix operations. Uh, but uh, again, very similar in structure. Everything is a operation on that workspace class. If you want to run a material property like, um, uh, what's a good example? I mean, surface area is a fine example. You want to run a material property like the surface area, uh, you have to do a uh, log input, you have to do a log output, and then uh, you do an error check somewhere in here. Well, there should be an error check. But uh, anyway, log input and log output has to be um, uh, has to be done uh, for any material property calculation that you're doing. So that's just a basic flavor of what it looks like behind the scenes. Um, as I mentioned, if you're interested in contributing, reach out to Federico or reach out to me and uh, we'll help. Um, if you have specific applications that you're interested in that you know, you're not sure if Puma can be helpful for your application, again, feel free to reach out. We're, uh, we're definitely more than happy to, to stay engaged with, with uh, the community doing microscale uh, simulations on this. And if there's a lot of people interested in a specific feature that we don't have, you know, that creates pressure for us to, to implement that feature as well. So I think I think that's um, I think that's everything. Uh, Francesco, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, no. Well, so like any question from uh, uh, from the uh, participants? I'm actually uh, I'm actually uh, yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I mean, like uh, a lot of this actually. Uh, was prompted by uh, by you requesting, so uh, I hope it was uh, was useful and uh, thanks for uh, for pushing us to uh, to do this. And um, well, uh, like the only remark I have is uh, first, uh, thank you Joseph and thank you Federico. You have done a, a fantastic job not only with the software but uh, uh, but putting uh, this together. Thanks, uh, you know, Naji and Colin that uh, also have uh, presented and Courtney. Uh, that um, uh, that helps us uh, steering the event, um, and uh, you know the, the really last remark is uh, uh, is help us making uh, Puma better software. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's really the best we can uh, uh, we can ask uh, uh, out of this. And uh, uh, please tell us where when you find bugs. Uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, also a useful. Uh, a useful thing and uh, uh, thank you everyone for again for participating and i hope you have uh, you have a great day a happy holiday period and uh, please stay in touch with us thank you
Great, thanks. And we'll stick around here for just a couple more minutes if anyone has any questions. Sure. Thank you.